Okay. So today, like I told you guys, it's really important that it's interactive. Today is, hold on. Speaker, okay. So today is Sunday, July 31st. This is really our first call of August. And I am so excited to, like Sabrina just said in the chat, start the week right, but really start the month right because I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I can only speak for myself and for the experience that you guys have shared with me personally. And that we go into summer with big goals. Uh, it's hot outside. It's going to be so much easier to drink water. Oh my gosh. Of course, I'm going to want to eat salads. It's hot out. I want to feel leaner. You feel every extra pound in the summer. And yet we forget, like we get amnesia, that summer is also... I have no free time. I'm pulled in a million places. I have work travel. The kids are home more. The kids are going to camp and need to be packed up. The kids come home from camp. Um, it, it's a plethora of other things. As much as I want to drink water, I'm hot. I'm not in the mood for water. I want a popsicle. I want ice cream. It's also hot and I want this. And it can sometimes lead us down a path of frustration feeling a little bit like I thought this was my time. Has anybody, and put this in the chat for me, has anybody felt like I thought this was going to be the time that the weight loss was going to be easier? This summer, this month, I thought this was it. And then like the air just came out of the balloon. Anybody had that feeling? Put a one in the chat. If you've had that feeling, and feel free, you can feel free to be more expressive. But if you've had that feeling, you're like, this is it. Everything is aligned. It's hot out. Everybody told me it's so much easier to drink water in the summer. I'm going to eat so many vegetables. And then like you show up and, and it's just not happening. <laughs> you forgot that this was your time. For the last six months. Okay, good. Where we are. Okay, good. Um, how about you've lost weight before, maybe even with to be mindset and you've gained it back some, not all. I think one of the most beautiful things about to be mindset is it's rare that somebody really gains all the weight back, but it is, there's a certain commonality of proportion of people who gain back some, some. Myself included, I, I gained back 10, lost it again, gained back 10, lost it again, gained back 10, lost it again, gained back 10, lost it again. Each time was a better iteration. Each time was a better iteration. Yeah, you guys are, are feeling me. Okay. You totally went into summer saying it's your summer and it's very drinko and you really wanted everything to, to go to be way and it didn't. So that really puts us in the need for a to be mindset reboot. If you are want to leave today feeling excited to be accountable, put a one in the chat. If you want to leave today being excited to be accountable, put a one in the chat. Excellent. So rebooting to be mindset is going to come back to accountability. And my teenage son reminded me today, no, last night at 1.30 in the morning, how much we freaking hate accountability. <laughs> like real accountability, not like just the high five when you do the thing, but the like, you're in front of your video game, AKA the fridge pantry. And it's been a sh real poop of a day, poop of a week poop of a feeling about yourself. And in that moment, you are so vulnerable. <laughs> Sharing that space with another human being, let alone the internet, let alone people on the internet is so much harder than grabbing a snack. It's so much harder than turning off the video game. Even being accountable to someone you love can even feel even more vulnerable, right? Are we, are we feeling like why accountability, honest to God, is so hard? 
It's because when accountability really matters, that's when we really struggle with it. When it's just the daily sweaty selfie and we're doing it every day, it feels amazing. But when it's been three days and we really could get a workout in today and we're just not feeling it, being accountable, really hard. Accountability, absolutely, like Jen just shared with us in the chat, keeps us in line. But it only really has results when you do it during the hard times. So how do we get ourselves to be accountable during the hard times? And Sorel is a great example of this. Uh, in the group, she really uses it to be an accountable and share her vulnerability in a beautiful space. But for a lot of people, and I'm sure for you as well, Sorel, it did not come naturally, especially not in an online forum. And it's also why coming on the Sunday calls every time we're privileged to be able to host one is so important because now you see my face, you feel my heart, you feel all of our vibe, and you know we really deeply care about you and accept and love you unconditionally. You're welcome to come back as many times you need to your own drawing board and say, hey, what's happening for me right now? So when we get into accountability, it first comes from strengthening the muscle with the easy stuff. The, hey, I worked out today, Swell selfie. Hey, I didn't work out on a Beachbody program today. I took a walk today, selfie. I went to the pool today, selfie. I chased my kids at the park today, selfie. What that does is it creates a neural connection that says it's safe to share. It's safe to share. How many of us from life feel unsafe a great amount of the time? Okay, at most people here, I don't think we have anybody on the call today who's under 30. Okay, you have gone through stuff. You don't feel safe all the time. <laughs> Are you with me? One, you don't feel safe all the time. You don't feel safe all the time. Every time we take a selfie, we remind ourselves it's safe to share in Thrive. It's safe to share with these people. And so it can be your water. Sharing your water bottle. Everybody grab a water. No problem. Thank you so much, Mo. Um, when we share the little things, we build up that muscle of feeling, hey, it's safe to share that today, today was a hard day and I was so proud of myself and I did so well. And then it's that four o'clock window and you know you can grab the thing and it would be so easy to just turn off mindfulness. It would just be so much easier than taking out your phone and writing, not feeling it right now and the cookies are calling my name sharing to be accountable. When you're accountable, it makes all the difference because weight gain doesn't happen in, oh, I happened to have a carb tonight at dinner and it was like an FFC, I had that apple. That doesn't really cause the weight gain. What causes the weight gain is those times where you break down and it takes a day, it takes a week, it takes a month, to get back on track. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you so much, Debbie, for asking this question. You're not getting what I'm saying about connecting to selfies in this way. Are you open to coming on and sharing how you feel about them? Because this gap is why the people who are taking selfies and are sharing in the group is going down and why the people who share the most have the most consistent results. So talk to me about where the disconnect is between a selfie and creating a safety to share with these people. I don't mind sharing. I just sure. don't see the point in the selfie. I, not that it's not my generation. It's nothing. It doesn't mean anything to me. Absolutely. It's fine to do a selfie with friends and whatever at an event. I don't connect with it. I totally hear you. I did not connect with it when I first was getting started either. So a selfie or a photo of any kind, whether it's a photo of your water bottle or a photo of 
something as for a lot of people easier than writing out the words. Okay. It's easier than writing out how you're really feeling. Right. I mean, that takes a lot more vulnerability and we have to practice somewhere. Taking a picture of your water, taking a picture of your plate, taking a picture that you acknowledge that you worked out starts to do this thing that, you know, uh, in different generation, they used to call it mirror work. Have you ever heard of mirror work? Debbie, have you ever heard of mirror work? Selfie is the modern generation way to do mirror work with other people interactively online. It's to look at your own face and say, I am doing this and I'm sharing it and it's safe. And one of the hardest things we do as women is acknowledge the small wins. Every time I am working with clients one-on-one -on -one, or I'm having a private conversation with anybody here in the group, people will list win after win after win after achievement and write them all off with, yeah, but that's the easy thing for me right now. This thing, this is where I'm really struggling. When you selfie, you stand up and celebrate yourself. And you practice making that something that becomes more comfortable and safe because it isn't really for anybody who's of our generation, mine included. Still no, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not pressuring you, I'm gonna let you be. I want you to come back at the end of the call and ask yourself if you're willing to share with us is there anything that does make you feel safe to share more of yourself in the group? What would that be? Awesome. It's not just the sweaty selfie post-workout. It's a picture of a good meal. It's a water bottle. Exactly. It's the reflection of pride that you did the small thing. Thank you. I yell it. And it's so hard to take those before pictures, but it's so powerful to share them. In fact, it, it's exactly what Brene Brown says. We take back our lives from shame when we're willing to have a safe space to talk about them. So let's keep going um, because we're talking about to be mindset reboot. So the number one is to be excited about being accountable. And we just talked about why accountable is so hard. It's so hard to selfie. Maybe you're not connecting with them. But how else could you be accountable? Let's think about it. How else could you be accountable? Well, you can have your TV mindset tracker. Why is tracking the hardest of all the bunnies? Because it's accountability. <laughs> And we just talked about how you don't even want to be accountable to yourself. I don't want to be accountable to myself on my worst day. I only want to really be accountable when it's something to celebrate. I don't really want to be accountable with like, I don't know what happened six hours went by and I didn't drink water today. Or gosh, I'm just not in the mood. I'm just not in the mood. I'm just not in the mood. I can't tell you how many people who are long-term bunnies have been writing to me recently. I don't know, understand why all of a sudden I just don't want any vegetables anymore. Okay, okay, breathe, slow it down. Just acknowledging and sitting with that thought gives you a chance to check in with it. If you would write in your tracker, I really, in my mindset at the top of the page, I don't want to eat vegetables today. I don't think anybody's ever done that. That would be incredibly brave. That would be incredibly courageous to write, I don't want to eat vegetables today. And then I bet, do you know what you'd see? you'd see yourself eat a vegetable, even if it was one. <laughs> you'd see yourself, the second you wrote the words, oh, I don't wanna eat any vegetables today. You'd be like, do I wanna be accountable to that? Is that really true? Maybe I'll have a cucumber with my French fries, right? I can maybe do that. Maybe I can, I can get back on the boat step by step by step by step by step. Accountability is key. So tracking is the hardest part of all the buddies because it's about accountability. So again, how do we get results to be fun? How do we get accountability to be fun? So I love what Sorella just shared in the chat. Alana refers to the tracker as your personal weight loss book. All the peaks and valleys are your journey 
And that's priceless for your present and your future. Beautifully well said. I yell at you, being accountable to my own tracker is really hard. Often if I eat something that was off the rails, I'll send myself, it's okay, I'll put it behind me and I'll take the weight off. But it's very different to write it down and move past that. Um, I will say for myself and for many, many, many people I have coached, the day that there is zero judgment with what I put down in my tracker was the most fulfilling part of the two be mindset journey ever. And it doesn't even remain 100% of the time that I can look at anything I've eaten with 100% neutrality. I can look at it and be like, interesting, that's curious. I wonder what was going down yesterday that I made that choice. But there's no more shame. There's no more shame because I literally shared the pages of my tracker for over two years in our accountability group. Two years of sharing specifically in its own post every time I really overate. And like, okay, the bowl of popcorn was this big and the sleeve of biscuits was this big and I am writing it out, not just to myself, I'm writing it out in the group. And I leaned into what Brené Brown said. And I know that my clients and you guys who have leaned into that have felt the freedom, that weight, inner weight lift off. So the weight loss can come back and back again. When it's your first time going through 2B, you really want it to be perfection. Oh, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be perfect. I want it to be perfect. It's a long amount of work sometimes to let go of that perfection and to have fun. Have fun with seeing small changes. Why MBF was so different to the tracker? I don't know what MFP is. Hana, what is MFP? Um, Sorry, just finding my uh, just finding my unmute button. Um, my yeah. it's my fitness pal. It's an online. Um, yes. Oh, I know what my fitness pal is. So yeah, the same. reason that that's different, different to the, the difference of the to be mindset tracker is that there is no perfect. Anybody who watches the videos again, I challenge you watch them again these weeks. She'll say, and this is the guideline, especially if you watch Alana's one-on-one um, -on -one calls or the group calls. And someone will say, and I've lost 40 pounds and I eat an apple every night after dinner. Or I eat a cookie every night after dinner. And she'll be like, that's amazing. They're like, you're not gonna tell me that, oh, I should be dinner and done. She's like, no, it's working for you. It's in your tracker, you're tracking it. You see, you're fine. If it stops being fine, then you'll have to deal with it. That there really is no perfect in 2B. There's guidelines, there's played it, but if you've seen her Instagram post where she shows like, this is played it for weight loss, this is played it for weight maintenance, this is played it for weight gain, like it's all played it. It's just yes, the- It's much more flexible. I mean- And so my fitness pal really pushes you to that perfection line. Yeah. Not only that, but you're trying to fit a box and that box might not even equal weight loss for you, okay. right? Like having this many grams of carbs is awesome for my fitness pal and might work for Shira or Debbie, but might not work for my Jan and Lily. Like could be, I mean, <laughs> you just don't, like I, I can do two cups of fruit and you can do one today. And maybe you'll have a different amount of muscle or different hormonal balance, like five years from now, and you'll do one cup and I'll do half a cup and it'll it'll be very different and to be mindset what's nice about the plate and what's nice about tracking is it gives you the freedom to not be perfect so this week I would love to invite you guys I created these really cute um, from our team thrive logo these cute little reminders tracker reminder water reminder accountability selfie reminder and they're going to go up every single day this week as a prompt, hey, just share something. Share that you did a workout today. Share that you drank water today. Share how many liters you're in right now. Share something you're eating. Share something. Share a picture of your tracker. Whatever thing doesn't feel connected for you, whatever thing doesn't feel safe for you, is the thing that's probably needs to be rebooted the most. 
so that you can see the next level of results. Because the second you say, I don't want to drink water. I am struggling with two liters. Okay. And you watch someone else post three and then they're like posting four. And then someone else posts this one, you drink another eight ounces. That eight ounces could be a huge difference for you that day. That eight ounces might not make a difference to me, but for you who stuck it too, you just broke through a limiting belief that you had. I only drank four liters and I would thought I was the queen of water when first starting to be mindset. And on a throwaway comment on an Instagram podcast, Alana said, I drink 200 ounces a day. And I was like, girl who weighs like 110 pounds, drinks way more water than I do at 170? Are you kidding me? I can for sure drink at least another liter. Without changing really anything else I was eating, that was the difference between 140, 70 and 140 for me was about hitting about 200 ounces in the end, was like going from four liters to closer to six or seven liters. And it was one liter at a time until that felt safe. And then I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this because I hate failing just as much as you guys do. I don't want to set myself up for fail. That feels really unsafe, like taking a selfie, like saying out loud, how much water you drink or what you weigh. These things feel unsafe for a reason. But the more that we condition ourselves, we realize someone's been programming us all along. Somebody else. Other people who've told us what weight loss should look like, diet books we've read, random conversations with friends, well-meaning family members in our childhood. We were even sometimes traumatized by just watching someone else in our life go through a weight loss battle before we ever had to deal with it ourselves. We're full of old programming that doesn't even belong to us. When you start to selfie, you start to create your own programming by intention. Okay, Sabrina said you switched to, uh, Sorrel said you switched to tracking in your own book with the same sections and you even customize the sections, feeling very overwhelmed and disoriented, struggling with everything now. Thank you. I have five. I just don't know where they are. Trackers. Oh, okay, fine. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to pause here and I want to open it up. How is this so far for you guys? Let's open questions about accountability, questions about what it means to have a reboot on 2B. Sorrel, did you just unmute? Go for it. So it's given me such a reboot what you're saying because um, as you probably kind of gather, I don't really have a problem with sharing yeah. <laughs> in rising post, but I haven't, I never really connected to people taking um, selfies of the, you know, their workouts. I never really got it like um, Debbie, like Debbie said, I never yeah. really connected to it. And then you said, because I started swimming and you said something about like taking a picture and it was just I remember I took a picture the day after I got back from corona my first swim post corona and I took a picture and it was so powerful to me I felt such gratitude that I was able to get back to it and and there is such a power in being in that moment of working out and and treat and being good and kind to yourself and sharing that like that's powerful too so thank you for that thank you for for sharing that as far, as much as everybody thinks you share this was something you didn't connect to yet. And that was why in the poll today, I asked people, when you first started to be, was it easy for you or was it hard for you? Did you see immediate success or was it like one bunny at a time? And it was 50-50 split. There's no perfect way to do this. Really, no perfect way. There's no perfect amount of accessories. Alana talks about 50 calories per an accessory. That's 100 calories per meal. I dare you to just track with unconditional acceptance whatever amount of accessories you're currently having and your weight. And over time, from a curiosity, from a neutral perspective, you'll recognize, huh, the more I kind of stray from that 100 calorie range, the less results I'm having or the slower my progress. And then you get to intentionally choose your programming. Get to intentionally choose today is a weight loss day. I'm going to try to stick to this 100 calorie accessories framework. Today, 
is not. My goal is to just healthy today and not and like, that's it. Maybe it's be 150 calories. I don't know. Maybe it'd be 200 calories. Maybe you really love that avocado and you're having a whole avocado. I've seen so many people like have a whole avocado in their salad and still have weight loss up to a certain point. And at a certain point, they're like, okay, my progress is slowing down. It's time for me to check back in with this, but they're tracking. They're being accountable in the process and not expecting perfection day one, because the people who expect perfection, and there are those of you who are those A plus students, what happens is you burn out. You need a reboot. And in the, if the reboot can come not from being more perfect again, but from being more compassionate, you're going to have a better journey and you're going to have a lasting journey that doesn't burn you out. But where you might have pauses in your weight loss, but you're not going to have huge weight gains on the other side. Okay. Um, next question. How to increase motivation to restart working out and plate it? So again, accountability is committing to writing down and saying out loud, I want to, I want to want to work out this week. I'm asking the group, what workout program is everybody doing that I can get excited about? Find somebody in the group who's doing a program that sounds interesting to you and tag them in your post that you did the workout. Even if you don't start with a picture, you just start with writing it. I did it. I did it. Motivation never comes from beating yourself up. Motivation comes from celebrating your success. To celebrate success, we need to do three things. Number one, we need to acknowledge where we are. We need to acknowledge where we want to go. And we need to acknowledge the tiny step we made in that direction. I really don't want to work out right now. I want to want to work out. Guys, somebody inspire me with a good program to do. And then, hey, I hit 15 minutes of that workout. I didn't the whole thing. I started. Uh, Yoni, I see your hand raised. So I'm, I'm going to go a step before that. And those of us, I guess, who have moved a little bit further on the journey, got past the, I'm waiting for motivation. Yep. That's going to be later. It's the just do. And somehow you will actually feel more motivated when you're slightly on your track to then continue. But you know, like the, in Hebrew, lolishma balishma, sometimes it doesn't come from a pure intention. Okay, I'm doing it because I have to. If you rely only on motivation, you're setting yourself up for, for failure. Because if those outside motivations fall away, you were relying on something other than you to succeed. And I think the people inside the group, on the page, within whatever um, you know, conversations they're having with their own accountability people, it's one thing to have a one-on-one -on -one, you know, back and forth accountability checking on each other. But to rely on someone outside of me, myself, and I, those are the three people I can rely on. Me, myself, and I. Anyone outside of that is a bonus. So that's where sometimes I was going to say utilizing accountability will add that motivation you want to hear. Let me share with people the struggle. Let me share with people challenges or questions. And let me share with people those victories. I finally got my tuchus off the couch and I did my first ever beach body you know, workout. Do you know how much the next day people will say, how was day two? If that's not a motivation, I don't know what it is, but you got yourself off the couch the first day. You, so when I, when I, people ask, I got to get motivated to finally work out, push yourself that first day, then reach out to everyone and say, okay, guys, this is what I'm doing. It's scary. We're here. We're here to help. We're here to support, but we can't, we literally can't pull you off the couch. So that first motivation, that starting, you know, seed of, of motivation has to be internal or it'll stop. Yeah. So that, that, that's the one thing I was going to say. As far as fun programs, it literally depends again on, I say this as someone who has body parts, I have to be very careful of. Um, but if you want simple fun, there's things like let's get up, which is dance and movement. And pardon me, you feel like a bit of an ass, but you do it. And let me tell you, you're sweating by the end and you're losing inches. Um, 
somebody else wants to speak them. So I want to, I want to, I want to come to Debbie and once was at Chana in one second, but I want to just focus on one thing that you said that I really want it's on my notes to get to. So I just want to make sure we highlight it because you said it beautifully. Accountability has nothing to do with the group. The accountability always is between you, you, and you. The group is there for you to have a safe space to do that. Because when we do it in our own head, sometimes it's the worst of us comes up. But when we do it in a more forum, there's, it's much easier to, be, to go from unconscious to intentional, to conscious, to self-aware, to intentional. How do I want to speak to myself when I do something? When I do a workout, if we don't share it, sometimes it's like, well, it wasn't, you didn't really sweat or wow, look how, look how well you used to do that. But when you share it, you practice hearing a loving, compassionate voice from other people that you can then internalize and practice speaking to yourself in that way. And that's very, very powerful and important. Every single thing that you accomplish because of our group or accountability, guess what? It wasn't because of our group. We just put out a platform and a place for you to be the star of your own show. But if you're not the star of your own life, really, like who should be? I don't know. It, it needs to be you. You're the only one who can be the rock star of your own life. Okay, Hannah, go for it. Uh, I just wanted to touch on something that Yoni said in terms of yes. you're not the accountability isn't going to get you off the couch. I kind of little bit disagree in terms of this week on our accountability group, someone posted how she really couldn't be bothered and whatever. I'm like, it's a small accountability group, um, not the big one that, that other people are on. Um, and they said, like, she made a comment, like, just go on, give it a go. And it, it literally, it, if had it not been for the accountability group, she wouldn't have done the workout. So like, I think that- But she spoke up, of- hold on, but she spoke up. What did she do? Oh, she-, she shared. That she she shared, my point was she shared in a safe space right. rather than say nothing. So why okay, would no, someone right. speak up and say, I can't no, be bothered? Right. Okay, no, I hear that. Okay. Right. And, and that's why there's those three steps. No, no, it's fine. But they're speaking up because they want someone to say, you know what you can. Yeah. And that's why there's three steps. So you have an accountability. Acknowledge where you are. Honest. That's what you only said. Acknowledge where you are. She came and showed up and said, I don't want to do this. But what's yeah. she also saying? I'm showing up because this, anything she does at that point, once she said that was a win. If she would have said, and I walked outside, we would count it as a win. If she said, I would have pressed play on a workout, it would be whatever would move the needle, we would recognize as a win. Yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. I was just question. talking about um, for some, for like I what stopped for a little bit of working out and I got back into, um, I did job one about four weeks ago. Um, Mm -hmm. because it literally it's not even like 20 minutes 25 minutes because there's five minutes of talking it is 20 minutes like from start it's quite incredible how short it actually is and the add-ons that I'm the extra add-on things are also like it's it's a fantastic workout for someone that is a bit and you feel it really want to by the time you're halfway through it you're already like done like by the time the negativity really, I'm tired. Like I don't want to continue. There's there's literally ten minutes, nothing. Yes, that's great. And you can do it with the lightest weights to heavier weights. Like if you you could do it from any fitness level, so it's a great option. Let's talk more. Uh, Aviva, did you have your hand up before? Nope. Anything you want to share? Uh, okay, guys. Let's see. Sima, Jen, anybody want to? Um, Sarah, first of all, so nice to see you. And I'm just looking. Randy's here. Yay so many amazing people okay um randy sarah people we haven't heard from yet today anybody interested to share in the chat share here this is your time to ask questions where are you honestly like let's be accountable together where are you today what's the one tiny step if i if we post this week right like just a check-in hey water check-in water accountability hey here we go workout accountability what did you move your body today did you have fun today did you do something today that you're proud of? We spend so much time when we're not motivated, when we're not doing it, feeling crappy about ourselves for not doing it. Any step in the right direction is a relief. The last part of tonight's call, I want to just open up also to that feeling of like, you hit rock bottom and so you're ready. Let's do this. I've regained a lot of weight on this. 
what happens when you start losing the first five or 10 pounds or you lose them lose two pounds and you don't have that like sharp, sharp pain anymore to keep you going. If you're not starting with those habits of accountability, that's that gap where sometimes we get lost. We need to start being accountable when we're feeling the drive so that we keep feeling that drive even as we keep going. Feeling crappy about missing workouts since last Wednesday, unpacking and nowhere to work out. I totally hear you. Again, it's do 10 pushups against the wall. And quite honestly, are you not schlepping boxes? Is there no way you can set your workout watch tomorrow, which I know you have, and be like, hey, I'm actually going to call moving boxes cardio, and I'm going to do 10 minutes of intentional cardio and selfie that I move boxes for 10 minutes, and that is lifting weights. Where am I? What's the next one thing? Those new fibers are amazing. Okay. And you've been trying to walk. See, I haven't worked out so when since Wednesday, but actually you've also been walking and moving. See, we're so hard on ourselves. Compassion, fun. They come from the, the, the selfie, the conversation, the accountability that's triggered when we share where we are, where we wish we could go. Oh, I wish I was working out more. Oh, wait, no, actually I am taking steps in that direction. I can relax a little bit. I don't be so hard on myself. I'll get there. Okay, uh, who would like, anybody would like to come on and talk? Uh, anybody have a question, something they'd like to share? Yes. Okay, Yoni. Oh, it was okay, that a new thing I just, I, I, A lot of people who recently were saying they're having an issue with tracking. Um, we found um, that a few people in our WhatsApp group had mentioned, they started tracking, they got to the bottom of the first page and I, want, I didn't get to write it, I wrote it notes. On Thursday, I think it was, Ayala had a great post and I didn't get to the page and I started writing something while I was doing something else and I didn't get to put it in. Um, at the bottom of the page, something I actually dislike, and I'm gonna be honest, I dislike about this, um, the tracker is that line that says about what today was. And the wording she uses, anybody know what the wording is offhand, what that last line is? Why today is great. Why today is great. Why today was great. Read it again. Why today was great. Is there every day great? Not my days. <laughs> every day I start my day. The first thing I do in the morning is go to the bottom of the page and I cross out why and great. And I'm opening up my day to possibility and I'm going to accept both of them. Not to be negative, but there is something about a, we talked about toxic positivity there are times I need to get to the bottom of the page so that when I track back and know why I had, pardon me, a shit show of a day. Oh, I'm going to manifest what today is. I'm not going to have anyone dictate to me what today is. I'm going to manifest the crap out of an amazing day, or I'm going to do the best I can with the load of garbage that came on my plate today. But I need to know that I get to the, back, back, the end of that day. And sometimes I day. Today was, and all I wrote was over. And the first yes. thing I wrote on the next day was in the morning motivation, it's a new day. And sometimes that's the best we can do. And that's okay. Um, sometimes being real allows you to do that next day, but to get to that bottom of the first day, I actually cross both those yeah. out each time. And again, I want to repeat, it is not to be negative. It is literally to allow possibility so I'm not in a box. So if any of you have I, ever gotten to that line, you're like, I don't know what to write. I'm feeling like I'm forced to write. Okay, today was great because I didn't kill anybody. Like, okay, how many times can I write? I didn't kill my children. Wonderful. Um, Sometimes the digital one says notes. Um, right. Can I say something to that? Just in terms of both some of what like Daria and uh, um, Jen has said also, first of all, there are some people also that I know, at least in my group, that have also really customized that to something else. Either, like, my mentality was always more seeing it in the way, not the entire day was great, but you know, like, that mean that that quote that not every day is great, but there is great in every day, or, like, not every day is, you know, per like, you can, it, for me, it helped me start in the morning seeking out something not toxic positivity but 
I found this parking spot even, you know, like in starting getting my mind working for the beginning of the day that just not to call the entire day crap. Great. Because so write it before the day starts about what you're grateful for before anything has happened. No, that's gratitude maybe before anything else. I like it because it helps me all day during even a difficult day to try to seek out what is something because to me, that was just more depressing writing my day sucks because to then in a way, like, I know it's very funny. Like, I guess sometimes when you have certain health issues, like, holy cow, a share Yatsar, just the fact that my back, like that's working. So for me, I really saw that as something that so some people may see it as, you know, a bit of gratitude. And for me, it helped me because it means that I have to look all day looking forward to at the end of the day, finding something, you know, when I know in advance, I'm going to have something great at the end of the day, even if the rest of the day was hard, then I'll even write in the beginning of the day because it gives me something to look forward to. Another but aspect I, I, I agree with you. That's why I said, I, yell no, at, that I wasn't disagreeing. No, 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 no. I know. All I'm saying is giving it a different perspective as only as opposed to seeing it as annoying. It's also possible to see it as a, even using Most it at the end of the day. Do. That's what I started with. I said, most people enjoy this. Most people have no, no issues. But, you know, no, 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 but you're, you're, not, you're not getting by me. It. I'm not disagreeing with you and I'm not saying I'm the opposite or whatever. I'm just giving you a different perspective that maybe somebody who finds it annoying or difficult didn't think about it in a way to try to maybe see something else. Again, not in a toxic way, but also somebody else has changed it to use that section as, what to maybe learn or work on for tomorrow. Again, in a maybe adapting that oh, section. Guys, do you see the power of accountability here? By coming up and stating your perspective, there's gonna be people in the group who see it differently. Look how many people in the chat have said how differently they use that section. It's the same thing with what your plate looks like. It's the same thing with if you love salads for lunch or you're always having stir fries for lunch. Uh, and stir fries work for you, or you can eat a whole bag of cauliflower or you have IBS and the thought of that would just explode your stomach. There's no perfect. There's no perfect. So there's nothing to fear about sharing wherever you are and what the next step you're going to take is. I heard from some people, they started tracking again, trying to reboot things. And all of a sudden, they're not seeing the success they saw when they first started to be. And a lot of times, we have to recognize every time we come back to to be, whether we've put on two pounds, we put on 10 pounds, we put on 40 pounds. Our body is currently different than it was when we first started. The hormonal balance is different. Our gut balance is different. Our amount of sleep is different. Our like What we've gone through over the last years is different. And so coming to it with a fresh perspective of starting to share and starting to look up new recipes, maybe that weren't your thing before, maybe new coping mechanisms that weren't your thing before, maybe you were never big on sharing and now you're going to start sharing, but gift yourself a new experience when it's your personal journey. And I want to, we have only like a few minutes left, but I'd love to ask who here experiences rebellion with the tracker, because I think that's also something that we have to talk about with accountability. Whenever there's accountability, there's also rebellion. Yes, sometimes we need to have a setback and more powerful comeback. Uh, anybody ever feel that sense of needing to rebel? Like, oh, I said, I'm only gonna have this FFC and now like throw it all away. I'm going to burn down the car. I'm gonna eat everything. Or you know what? Like if I'm not seeing weight loss, it's just not worth it to make this decision, that sense of rebellion, anybody having that? Because that comes with accountability. Like people said, it's triggering sometimes to write in the tracker or to be accountable. It can trigger a rebellion. Anybody having that? I just think another way just to sometimes re-verbalize it, I found like when you had said that part about, well, it's not like resulting in weight loss anyway, sometimes that rebellion can be well, if it didn't result in weight loss anyway, or the scale went up even though I tried, let me at least validate it and eat so what like I might as well the scale going up, I might as well then eat the blah 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 blah. Like right. I find that you know that sometimes comes up. Uh anybody going through that that you feel like you can share? 
Nope, gone through it in the past. Okay, put a one in the chat because I can't imagine really that no one else other than me has experienced wanting to set a goal and then wanting to rebel against goal. I'm gonna work out every day. And then you're like, I don't wanna work out every day. Who says I have to work out every day? This is so stupid. <laughs> okay, Randy's like, yes, totally, right? Okay, so what's the difference between triggering your own rebellion and accountability? That's where we get into posturing, fake, fake accountability. What's fake accountability? I am going to be perfect in my plate. It. I am going to work out seven days a week and I am drinking seven liters of water a day. I rebel every day. Okay, thank you. Thank you for legitimizing my experience, okay? When we set these big, big, powerful goals for ourselves, very often there's a part of our brain like laughing at us, like, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Okay, sure, sure you're gonna do that. No matter how far we are, and especially if we've even successfully done it before, there's something in our experience currently that we're not feeling strong about, that that's really going to happen. And so we sabotage it. We rebel. We're like, eh, okay. I have something that's really, really, really worked for me and has been, I know, worked for a lot of people I shared it with. So I hope you guys will be able to apply it and use it for this kind of, let's call it rebellion issue. Okay. And uh, I used it last night at 1.30 in the morning when I was struggling with my teenage son and there were these bags of Bomba out and peanut butter is my crap and um, grabbed a bag of Bomba and there were kid, my kid had left four pieces of pizza and I was like, holding them and I just really wanted to eat them. And I said, Lily, I love you unconditionally. I would love you unconditionally if you eat at 1.30 in the morning, this bag of Bomba and these four pieces of pizza. I will love you unconditionally. Is there anything I can do for you? How are you going? But all I ask is that you're going to fully enjoy it. And I looked at them and I'm like, damn it, I'm not going to fully enjoy a bag of bomb and four pieces of team at like 1.30 in the morning. And I quickly threw them in the freezer, hid them, filled up my water bottle and went to go be angry somewhere else. And I picked a fight with my husband and then we made up and yeah, moved on, <laughs> moved on with our life. Okay, there's that moment where rebellion is this act of like, are you even going to love me? Like, no, I'm going to love you unconditionally. You don't need to work out seven days a week today. You don't need to drink seven liters of water tomorrow. You don't need to have a perfect tracker. But can you just enjoy today? Eat whatever you're going to eat. Can you just like sit and, and just enjoy this water? If you're going to have this cookie, can you just enjoy the cookie for me? Because I love you unconditionally. So like, let's just enjoy the cookie so we can move on. All right, sit, be present. Confessionals with I yell at help you. Confessionals with your coach exactly is you being accountable. It's you being honest for where you actually are. Well, I'm really not at seven workouts a week right now. What I really am is in getting my butt out of bed and stretching for five minutes, right? Um, I'm really not at seven liters. Really just getting two liters by like 5 p.m. would be a real accomplishment today and owning how awesome that would be. Sharing your tracker with your coach or with an accountability buddy. Excellent. All these things. Um, was that helpful for anybody who's dealing with rebellion? Was anybody kind of, was that helpful? Aviva, Jen. Just this concept of if I'm going to love you every unconditionally anyway, might as well enjoy it. Yeah, Jen, raising your hand. Go for it. No, just saying mm -hmm. hi. No, no, no. I was just saying absolutely. Like loving myself no matter what is, is a process. And yes. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I actually ate the bomba today, but I fully enjoyed it when I ate it. So again, like there's, all, <laughs> there's always things um, to, to do and to work on. Okay. We have only five minutes left. Really? Ayala, you want to say something before we close it out? And I well, want no, to just on that, like Alana had that recently, she said herself also, like whatever Noah made this amazing meat, be like something and she found herself like picking at it while she was putting it away and in the kitchen and picking at it and picking it. finally she said to herself this is really yummy I want it but let me then enjoy it instead of just in a way of picking and then I'm never she goes this way if I enjoy it I she put it in a bowl sat down it gives it then like a like bookend when you do that 
And then she's like, and I know this may not, you know, this whatever the scale will say tomorrow, but at least then I'm spending my time enjoying it instead of constantly thinking I shouldn't be doing this and da, 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 and then like and then regretting it or whatever. Like turn it into something. Um, and yeah, that builds like resentment then, also. You're resenting then whoever yeah. put that in front of you, yeah. right? I could resent my son for leaving out the bomb and the biscuit, or she can resent Noah for cooking this thing in front of her. Or you like, right, shamefully picking, or you own like, oh, you know what? This is an eating opportunity. Mm, um, if I'm going to love myself unconditionally, well, then at least enjoy it. Like, if, if, is it really? And then you have to take a look at the other side. If you're If you're enjoying and you're not enjoying later, like we've talked about, are you then tomorrow loving yourself unconditionally? Are you like, oh, no, I totally accept that this was a weight gain season. Like, okay, that's why we have to still get on the scale. That's what accountability means. Yesterday, I had this thing and I thought I was really going to enjoy it. And about five minutes later, I was like, you know what? I really didn't need that. I'm really curious. How can I tell better whether it's impulsive, as we've talked about before, or spontaneous amazingness? Maybe it was just impulsive. Okay, next time, maybe I'm going to do a five-second roll. I'm going to put it away and then come back later if I really want it, right? Like I can play with curiosity and figure that out. Okay, Debbie, I know we started with you at the beginning of the call. I would love to hear if anything at all has shifted or you had any new insight. Do not feel pressured to agree with me. You're totally allowed to still be totally disconnected from selfies. But do you feel any more connected to accountability in any way now than you did at the beginning of the call? what I want, one um, but I, I'm just not in social media. But I don't want you to think that, um, um, that I find, like I, I'm fine. I feel that the WhatsApp group that we're part of um, is a safe place and, and I don't feel any shame in, in saying today was hard day or today didn't work or today did work. And um, definitely for accountability, it's just the whole concept of selfies. I guess it's not my generation. Um, so um, yeah, totally so, cool. That was Thank that you. was more that was what I meant initially. And um, yeah, and I'm I'm not enough. I don't you know I don't do very much on so on on social media. So. Yeah. But That's WhatsApp is the idea. same thing, right? It, it's, all, it's, it's still a form of social media. It's still a form of just being accountable. So again, mm -hmm. like writing is just a verbal selfie. Like think about it like that. It doesn't have to be a picture. Uh, okay. Thank you so much and keep doing you. Uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, any last kind of, okay. I want to check in. The whole point of this call was to feel rebooted, to go back, to start to be, to be excited to see accountability reminders and who put a one in the chat if you are excited to see what accountability to, could, can do for you if you feel rebooted great reboot excellent one got one so far anybody else feeling rebooted yes excellent Kana, one one if you are not a one please don't feel pressure a half half is better than none half is definitely more positive Rewatch the videos. Excellent. Um, there's going to be reminders to rewatch the videos. There's going to be reminders to be drinking your water just to be accountable, just to put it in the front of our minds. Excellent. You took out your tracker, one ish. Um, Aviva and Esther, no pressure. But if you are open, I want you to leave the call at a full one. What's one thing that needs to happen for you to be at a one? Everything's going to be in the Team Thrive Facebook group. If you need to re-access that, Esther, be in touch with me. Um, yeah, to get back in the group. Okay. Uh, Aviva, Randy, what would it take for you to be a full one? For you to be fully excited about the potential of you to be accountable to you? What's missing? Just do it. Amazing. So let's get practice right now and go into your group today, right now, the second we log off this call, 
and share one idea you had from this call, one mindset shift, one thing you want to be accountable for tomorrow. One thing, what, how much water you drink today, a picture of whatever water bottle you better be currently be drinking. Go in and take immediate uncomfortable action and be accountable right now. Like Yoni said, action begets more action. Don't wait to be motivated. Generate it by taking action. Who's in? Let's do this. Let's go out, go straight into the group, and the recording will be available tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for your incredibly valuable time. I love seeing all your faces here in Zoom, and I can't wait for after back to school to where these are always, always, always happening, and love you guys.